Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of How to Tech. I'm your host, Adam, and today in this video, we're going to be talking about how to encrypt your hard drive using BitLocker on any Windows machine in order for you to protect your hard drive and the data on it in case the drive or your machine is ever stolen or possibly um, the hard drive is reused or something along those lines. Um, so let's dig right in. All right, so on your Windows machine, you're going to go to the Start menu, and you're just going to type in BitLocker, and Manage BitLocker will come up. You can also access this directly from the control panel, but I always find that it's easier just to go uh, directly into it. Now, when the, when the uh, window comes up, you'll get the option there to turn on BitLocker. BitLocker uses, by default, if the computer has it available, um, a TPM chip. Um, and what that is, is a chip that sits on your motherboard. And that chip is separate from the hard drive and the data on it. And what it does is every time that you start your computer, it knows that um, this is the computer that you have this hard drive in, and it's married up to BitLocker. And it stores the key inside of that chip. And so um, it shares that key with the hard drive when you turn it on, and it allows you to go right in without having to put the BitLocker key in. This is standard among almost every manufacturer today, from Dell to Lenovo, Toshiba. Um, you're going to find this on almost every computer. And this will allow you to put BitLocker on the computer without using a USB stick or using some third party device uh, to encrypt your data. And so um, you want to take advantage of this because number one, it's free. And number two, it's very convenient. So I'm just going to click on uh, turn on BitLocker on my C drive. All right, now it says this device can't use a TPM. Your administrator must set the allow BitLocker without a compatible TPM option in the required additional authentication at startup policy for OS volumes. So let's see why that is. I'm going to go over here to TPM administration and let this load. Says a compatible TPM cannot be found on this computer. Verify that this computer has a 1.2 TPM or later, and it is turned on in the BIOS. All right, so um, let's take a look and see what this computer has. Now to do that, I'm going to open up PowerShell. I'm going to run it as administrator. And then I'm just going to type in get-tpm. All right, so looks like TPM is not on this machine. It's not ready. It's not enabled or activated. It's not owned. There's no restart pending. Um, so that's very interesting. What I'm going to do now is restart my machine, and I'm going to check my BIOS. Hey guys, welcome back. When I was gone there for a minute, what I did was I restarted my computer and upon restarting, I went ahead and I pressed F2 as the computer was booting up to get into the BIOS. I noticed that my TPM had actually been set to disabled and I just turned it on. I set it to enabled and I restarted and now the machine is back up and I'm gonna go ahead and go back into PowerShell and I'm going to um, type in the same thing as before. Oh, administrator privilege is required. This is a good lesson. Always open PowerShell and the command prompt as admin. All right, so let's see. Get TPM. Let's see here. There we go. So it is present, it's ready, it's enabled, and it's activated. All right, that's what we want. So let's close PowerShell. And if we go back over here on the left side of the BitLocker screen to TPM administration, I should see a different message now. Yep, there we are. 
So I have TPM here. Um, the version is 2.0 and um, everything looks good. The TPM is ready for use. All right, so let's close this window. Now I'm going to turn on BitLocker. All right, here we go. Starting BitLocker. Now it says, how would you like to back it up? The key. You always want to back up your recovery key because this is what happens. Anytime there's a hardware change on your machine, and that means um, you get more RAM, you upgrade your CPU, uh, possibly even your battery, you change um, just anything, any actual hardware device on this machine, the configuration changes, then when it boots up, it's going to realize, hey, this isn't the same hardware as I had before. you got to put in the key. And so you're going to have to have this key backed up um, and be able to get to it somewhere. So for me, I always just save it to a file. And um, right now, I'll just put this in the downloads. But I will save this text file to uh, a USB key. Um, OK, see, I tried to. Uh, save it on my local drive. It says you can't do that. You have to save it to a different location for security purposes. So luckily, I do have a second hard drive on this machine. I'll just go ahead and put it on. Oh, can't put it on the root. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's just make a folder on the root called BitLocker and save. There we go. All right, next. Now, we can encrypt used disk space only. This is faster. Um, or we can encrypt the entire drive. Um, what this basically means is I'm going to encrypt the files I have right now. I'm not going to en encrypt the free space. Now, on the surface, you would think, well, yeah, of course that's what I want to do. I want to save space or I want to save time. But if you encrypt the entire drive, then that means even the files that you've deleted in the past, they cannot be recovered if somebody takes your drive. So especially if you um, work with sensitive data of any kind and you don't want anybody to ever be able to access files that you might have deleted, maybe finance files or taxes or something like that, medical records, um, you want to go ahead and encrypt the entire drive uh, so that everything gets encrypted, even the empty space that could get recovered, possibly. Um, so we're going to encrypt the entire drive. Next. Now, what uh, mode of encryption do you want to use? Um, you can use the new mode or the compatible mode. Um, this is a fixed drive. I'm not going to be moving the hard drive on this laptop. If I was encrypting a USB drive, I'd do the compatible mode, but I'm not. All right, are you ready to encrypt? Encrypting might take a while. You can keep working, although you, it might run slower. Now I can run a BitLocker system check if I want, um, and that just lets it um, ensure that your recovery and encryption keys are correct and that they talk to each other right before it actually starts encrypting. And uh, BitLocker is going to restart my computer uh, before encrypting. And um, I'm not going to run this right now because I just want to go ahead and show you what the encryption process looks like. So start encrypting. And here we go. So now it's encrypting my drive. Um, this drive is not very big. It's uh, about 256 gigabytes. But it is doing the whole drive, so it may take a little while. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed through this for you guys and then show you the next part. All right, here we are an hour and about 10 minutes later at 99%. Almost done. Uh, while this finishes, I just want to go over real quick uh, the type of security you're getting here. When you encrypt to your drive, you're getting security from the machine being stolen and then that data being accessed. Um, you're not getting the security of logging on to the machine. You're also not getting the security of antivirus. You're not getting security of firewalls. Um, those are other layers of security that you need to have in place on your machine. 
And we'll go over those in future videos, but that is what encryption is allowing you to do. It's allowing you to protect that data if it gets in the hands of someone else. All right, so it's complete. We'll close now. Shows that BitLocker is on. Now, if I go to my file explorer and I just check um, my drive, I can see right there that little lock is showing me that um, it's unlocked at the moment because it's on and I'm connected with my TPM chip. So the data is unlocked. But as soon as I um, restart, log out, turn it off, whatever, it will be locked. Um, so the encryption is on now and um, it will not allow anybody to access it without the key um, if they try to get to the data without logging in and turning it on with this hardware. Um, now, I'll go to the key real quick. Um, let's see here. So this is the one I just made, actually. And here is my key. Now, this is my ID for the key in my, my computer, my hard drive. And then this is the actual key. This is the number that you will put in when BitLocker prompts you for the recovery key, uh, if you ever need it. So this number needs to be saved. Um, again, like I say, I save it in a file that I can access that's not on the drive. You can write it down. You can email it to yourself, whatever you have to do. Uh, but make sure you always have that backup of that key. Um, so that is how to encrypt the drive. Now, if um, you want to suspend protection, you can do that right here. Now, what that does is it does not unencrypt anything. But what it does is it turns off the need for uh, the key. And so it basically leaves it unlocked after you, you shut down, after you restart. Now, why would you ever want us to do that? Well, in some cases, you have software that needs to go on the computer um, and it needs to uh, restart the computer. It needs to make an, a change of some sort and or you, it needs to automate a process after it restarts. And um, if it does it without suspending uh, BitLocker, it will require the key on restart. It will not finish. Um, for example, if you update your BIOS, this will happen. If you update your uh, TPM firmware, this will happen. And you'll have to suspend the protection beforehand. Protection also gets suspended if something happens to the TPM chip. The computer will realize the TPM chip has failed and it'll suspend protection so you can still get to the data from this hardware, uh, but you need to get that fixed or you need to um, transfer your data off and get it on another hard drive where you can encrypt again. And then finally, you can turn off BitLocker right here. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it today on BitLocker and how to put it on your machine and what it does. Uh, it's free encryption software built into Windows that you can put on any device or drive. Uh, the encryption is very strong. It cannot be uh, hacked. It cannot be broken into. And um, there's not a, su a supercomputer on Earth right now that can do this um, with all the brute force that it has. So you're safe with, with your drive being stolen if you've encrypted it like this. And um, make sure you do that, especially, you have any, especially if you have any kind of sensitive data on your machine. So I appreciate you checking out this video. If you liked it, uh, please click like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Maybe we'll do a series on security and the different layers of it. Uh, if you think that's a good idea, let me know. But I uh, appreciate you checking it out. See you next time. And this has been Adam with How to Tech.